Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do Freedom Fighters 11 from DC Comics. So yeah, we're going to continue. I like the series a lot. I don't have much, uh, but what I have, I I really enjoy it. And um, and this is uh, some, well, it's not really a special issue, but something that happens. The topic is what happens in modern times. And it, it astounds me that, um, that I, I read a couple of books from yesteryear, because this is a 70s book. And what's happening here is also reflecting what's happening now, but what's happening now is is worse. And I'm, you know, and with worse, I'm going to explain that a little bit later. But we're going to dive in right away because in the last issue, Ray's was being shot. And we see, I don't know, we have an origin story, very small, and this guy's you know, sitting, drinking coffee. So it seems that he was... Um, I don't know, happy, you know, well, this guy is here um, on a strato balloon, right? Um, so I don't know what it is, maybe a weather balloon, but there's people in it. And it seems that the door cannot close. And so he goes outside and says, oh, I'm going to shut the door. And he says, well, if you don't be careful, you're going to be shot into space, which is weird because there's oxygen outside, right, with clouds. So probably you will fall instead of going into space. But then, I don't know, he's getting hit by a cosmic storm. What? Do we have cosmic storms in our, in our, <laughs> in our stratosphere or atmosphere? I don't know. But then suddenly he, he is the ray master of light. So, yeah, that's exactly what happened. You're getting shot by cosmic particles and you immediately know that you are an X superhuman with X powers and you also have <laughs> automatically be the master of it. Uh, probably that's not how it went, but you know, it, it, made, it made me chuckle. So, okay, and he's sweating a lot, and then he wakes up and he says, "Where am I?" He says, "It's uh, it's it's all right. You've been hurt. Please don't move around, or you'll tear open that wound." <laughs> Look at his face. So, um, and he says, "Where is where is the American Mando? I was following him." And he says, "Well, don't. He's gone. He left you for dead. But um, I know that you are looking for me. But you know, I'm not going to find, and I'm surrendering." So Ray says. Mister, I don't know who the places you are. But then, reader, do you know who this man is? Check back next issue and learn if you write. Well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Meanwhile, we have a doll man who is uh, on trial for murder. Um, I explained a little bit uh, in, in issue 10, so you can check it out and subscribe to my channel and all the YouTube jazz. It would be nice. Uh, I'm going to skip this court thing because court stuff, in my opinion, is always boring. It's just a lot of gibbering and jabbering. Um, I don't know. It's just not, not for me. Anyway, um, and then we go uh, uh, way somewhere else. In the heart of Texas, where other free members of the Freedom Fighters are, and, and Uncle Sam says, Ah, Sandy, Betsy Russell Shell would have been proud of you, stitching job. Of the stitching job you're doing on my hat. Somehow, Sam, I don't think sewing the stars and stripes together was as was tough. Next time, duck a little bit lower. But then the human body is a little bit pissed off. And he says, um, you know, this is ridiculous. We're sitting around fixing a hat while Daryl's on trial for murder 2,000 miles away. And Happy is disappearing. It's probably the Ray, I guess. And um, there's no uh, word for Tom in two weeks. So Tom is the black condor. <laughs> Sam says, Dang, Nabbit Roy, how many times do I have to explain? There's nothing we can do for Daryl. Good old American justice will win out. <laughs> the dialogue is so cool. Uh, and if Tom, if Tom couldn't find Happy, how in tarnation do you expect us to? So, but then the human bomb says, Hey, why don't we go around, you know, in a civilian and identities and set up some kind of a, um, a base of operations, right? And um, he says, I say it's a waste of time. No way this is going to help Daryl or Happy or Tom. This team of ours is getting smaller and smaller. And you ain't doing anything about it. So, okay, then um, she comes in. Uh, what? I forgot her name. How, oh, my God. What's her name? Um, not a, it's not a visible girl. Oh, my God. I just forgot her name. <laughs> I'm getting that to it. Um Anyways, he says, hey, you're best friends. This is no time for a silly fight, right? 
Um, and she said, we need to find jobs, otherwise we can't pay, pay rent. I like that. Superheroes finding jobs. But then uh, we see stuff that is reflecting in modern times a little bit because um, these Indian says, we are the most oppressed and underprivileged people of the great nation. Um, are those of us who were first, the American Indians. We are asking your support to help us set up a school to give our red brothers a chance to get us a good education. And um, there has been a talk of equality in this nation between the blacks and the whites. But I ask you, what about the red man? How about you, friend? Show your American spirit and make a donation. There is no one who lost this country more than me, son. But even a red-blooded yank can be short of cash. <laughs> he says, cheapskate. Now, this is the fun factor. A dollar and 65 cents? That won't even pay for coffee these days. There's got to be a way... Uh, a better way to keep us in bread, crazy horse. This organized begging for phony school fund is a drag. <laughs> exactly. This is what's happening in real time now. Remember BLM? That was a scam. I mean, um, and you can say, well, Marinus, that's not. Well, it is because the, one of the founders of the BLM has bought herself a 3.5 million or even higher mansion uh, in a white neighborhood. So what happened to the rest of the money? Where did that go? Nobody talks about BLM anymore. But they said, but at that time, it was a thing, right? And if you say anything's against it, then you are the R word, you know? And they're calling you the German N word too, if you are, you know, up, up against that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people that are using outrage as a means to, to, you know, to an end, uh, especially with modern climate. I mean, back in the day, this is the 70s. I, I truly believe that this oppression against blacks and reds and other minorities are were a thing back then. And uh, racism is bad, don't get me wrong. And it, it's still going on. But what now is happening is that um, people are being professional outraged. There is a climate that can make people rich if you just cry victim enough, right? Instead of, you know, being reasonable, having to talk with people about racism. But no, it's just finger pointing and accusing and, oh, we are, you know, we are slaves back then and we, we need reparations and all that BS. No, you don't want to have reparations. You want to have money. You want to become million millionaire because that's what you are crying. We need 50 million, 50 million dollars for reparation. Are you fucking crazy, dude? It's not going to happen ever. Uh, so, yeah. Um, professional outrage and, you know, of all those um, YouTubers and social media and news outlets going on. So this, this is a, a financial model, if you will. And uh, yeah, and this is reflecting that. Well, not really, because basically he says it's all a scam. And I like that a lot. Uh, but let's move on because I'm getting into politics and it's not what I want. He says, the answer lies with our ancestors, tall tree. We must pray them for guidance. Not that old chestnut. Bad enough, you've got us running around in these outfits. Our heritage is not something to be taken lightly from the cloud. But if, if you cannot be proud of what you are, how can you ever expect to be treated as any more than a second-class citizen? I like that. Um, so he says, um, spare me the speech, brother. I know what it takes to go first class, but you're confusing a money-making venture with fantasy. This is 1977. Indians can go on a warpath and scalp cowboys anymore. <laughs> he says, you're wrong. We are on a warpath, battling a system that has deprived us for years. So and then it says, let's call upon our ancestors. And they're doing some mumbo jumbo. And then it's somehow, somehow lightning is forming uh, above the city. And then, a lightning bolt comes out and strikes all four Indians, right? And they've been infused with power. Chief Crazy Horse has gained the swift, the speed of the swift stallion. Tall tree, the power of massive growth, rain in the face, mastery of water and thunder clouds, the power of storms. I like that. Where does this come from? I don't know. It's just comics, right? It's just random. And... Uh, <clears throat> I need to get this. this. is one of the greatest stories ever told, in my opinion. Uh, with I, lo I love this duo. Um, so what did they do with the power of, you know, with, with superpowers? 
Well, they do. <laughs> they do what they are doing in in modern times. They, <laughs> people that cannot be touched and have too much power, they go on looting. <laughs> They're gonna rob banks or going to Apple stores and you know getting computers and and telephones and you know clothing stores without getting interfered by anyone because these people are untouchable because that's the law now. If you are a minority you can rob a store you can do that and nobody can touch you <laughs> this is so crazy and uh, so they are going uh, robbing banks right and uh, but then uh, uh, the freedom fighters comes in right he says they call us freedom fighters because we feel every person has the right to freedom <laughs> is that how you say it and every right to freedom <laughs> But that doesn't include the right to steal somebody else's money. Nobody invited a speechmaker here. Diver man. So let me just put you back on the water. And uh, so he says that doesn't do anything against the human bomb. Right? And um, ads. More ads. So yeah, there's going to be a fight with... Um, Keep him busy, brothers. Once I grab the squaw, we can hold her hostage. She says, the days of the helpless woman are over, mister. Oh, yeah, Phantom Lady, that's something. How could I forget? Um, so she's shooting some black lightning um, um, against his her foe, and then she zaps her with his lightning eyes. And then Sam says, Dang it, why don't you stop hopping around like a jackrabbit? Fight like a man. What's the matter, Gramps? Don't you like being surrounded, even if it's only by only one man? Hmm, if I start swinging... The punch in the opposite direction of the way he's running. I should make contact. Pretty smart, right? And um, so, yeah, and then the police comes and uh, they need to get away. He says, um, you ain't going anywhere, Sister Human Bomb. Yes, you are. Pardon me while I slam this door in your face. <laughs> so the cops come and he's being spoused by water. And um, so the cops come and he says, nobody moves. Sure glad the suit of mine is sturdy, or it'll be as flat as a pancake. And Sam says, Dang it, Roy, stop jabbering and get yourself out of there. <laughs> How can he do that, Sam? He's, he's stuck, idiots. And then the cops say, Hey, you, you are uh, under arrest for attempted robbery. Now, just a darn minute, officer. I'm getting dog tired of being blamed for everybody else's crimes. The man that robbed his bank has already fled. So then the, the bank guy says well that's true and then right it's otherwise other guys did it and they they just fled the scenery and uh, he says well i still have to take them in for questioning um more um stuff that is i'm not going into with the verdict so we're gonna come that a little bit later to that uh, so they are going you know free and then the indians are robbing another bank and um he says you again yeah but don't worry, this will be a last fight with you guys. Um, my <laughs> lightning eyes will electrify you. Yeah. Those lightnings are going to be black when I get over there. <laughs> I love this dialogue. It's so fun. It's, this, is what, this is why I'm trying to say. This is a fun comic. You know, it's, it's pretty basic and simple. And, in, and sometimes the narrative is, is a little bit like cringe. But the fun factor is really here, and that's what I like about Freedom Fighters, right? It's just, it's fun, right? There's nothing more than that. Um, but the message is cool. I'm going to tell you the message here right away. Uh, anyway, so more fighting, right? And um, and actually looks pretty cool, right? Um, and then, you know, they did a one, two, three, and a four, and then it's a wrap. You know, the Freedom Fighters defeated the, how did they call themselves? The renegades, and they are demonic. I don't know why they are demonic, uh, but okay. And they never said they are the renegades in the comic. Well, okay, let's move on. Suck. <laughs> All right. Now this is this is another fun thing here. So the cops come in again, and he says, "Oh, look who's here, Officer One Note." And this time we got the real crooks for him. Cuff those three men while I try to figure out how to handle this one. Part of my stereotype Hollywood lingo officer, but this is one heap of an in big engine. <laughs> Very funny. Um, so, hey, uh, I did a background check on you, he says, and uh, 
yeah, you you did some disturbance in uh, in New York, and normally I would you know take you in, but uh, since what you did is is, is good, so I'm uh, maybe if you manage to slip away during the confusion here, hint hint, and then the other officers charge the print of us are getting away. Mm, are they? Mm. Remind me to put out a ABP on them sometimes next week. So the Indian says. We should all, we should be freed also. We were merely furthering our cause, righting wrongs done years ago. Mister, your cause seems to go only so, go only as far as your own pocket. And if it's equality you want, you got it. You and your buddies will get you your day in court, just like anybody else. Now, that is a good message. Just, you know, you did, you, you, you being oppressed, you gain powers or, you know, whatever you did, what you got, and then you, Use that powers for wrongdoing, you know, being criminals. And now, equality is, is, is what you get by being, I don't know, getting on trial for, I don't know, robbing, destroying property and all that stuff. That's how it should be. There's no, no, um, how do you say, it doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter what your belief is. You're doing something wrong. You are, you are. Breaking the law, you going to fucking jail. That's how it should be, right? Um, yeah, so that's a great message. And, and also, um, Dolman is, is getting, is being guilty of murder of the first degree. That gets into, um, into the next issue that we're going to review. Yeah, like I said, this is a fun, fun, fun comic. And, you know, modern comics, I'm going to speak about it. I have to. Modern comics, you know, the message is just here is very clear. You're right. You're doing something wrong. Doesn't matter where you come from. You're going to jail. Buy manga, buy all the comics, buy 70s, 80s, 90s comics. Comics, They are the best, maybe a little bit mid-2000s, but that's about it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.